My dear Darwin, do you think our young friend here, equipped with a multiplicity of talents, might be enough to ensure Mr. Hammond safe passage? Who's Hammond when he's at home, then? A mutual friend of ours. He arrives in London today. From South Africa, no less. Mr. Hammond is possessed of both tremendous wealth and charming innocence which makes him rather attractive prey for some of our great city's less savory inhabitants. We fear he'll need a more robust escort than two old men might provide. I'm not a coachman, you know. We have already told him to expect you. His train should have arrived ten minutes ago. Well, then, I suppose a friend of yours is a friend of mine. Splendid. Off you go. Mr. John Hammond? That is correct. Jacob Fry, Mr. Dickens sent me to meet you. Oh, good old Dickens. How very kind of him. Lead on, then. Mr. Fry, good to see you again, sir. The man who seems to get everyone the boat. Can't say I've missed the weather. My father passed away recently, and I have come home to settle his affairs. Also, I am to be married. You don't sound too keen on the idea. I have never even met my future bride, Bella Wilton. It was all arranged for me. She may be a good woman, or she may not. I stand to inherit a vast sum. Can I be certain that the lady is not simply in it for the money? Sincerity. Mr. Fry, good to see you again, sir. Won't bite back now, will you? I am now officially dead and have thus shed my fortune. I shall meet Bella Wilton as a nobody. We shall see if she'll have me now. Come, we must dispose of my body. Find us a carriage to take us to the river. Whoa! 
My fiance, I can't wait to see her response. I feel quite liberated, as if a great weight has been lifted from my shoulders. After this, just to be sure, would you take me to my fiance's house? I shall deliver the sad news myself. Yeah. Seems a bit risky to me. She has never set eyes on me. Besides, I need to ascertain whether I like her as well. And I want to see how she reacts to the news of my death. Keep moving. Come on, yeah. hurry up! This is taking far too long. You're going the wrong way, I'm sure of it. <laughs> Miss Wilson? Yes? My name is John Rokesmith. I'm afraid I have some terrible news for you. Oh? Your fiancé, John Hammond, was found dead in the River Thames this morning. Oh, how awful! Poor Mr. Hammond. I am at a loss at what to say to you, sir. You must forgive me. She is delightful. Why, I do believe I love her. <laughs> Certainly an unusual first meeting to talk about in your wedding speech. something to give you. That really isn't necessary. More gifts? You spoil me, Greeny. Templar numbers are dwindling, and I hate to admit it, but the rooks are thriving. Did you hear that, Evie? Thriving. Your time in London has been well spent. I am proud of you. Oh, Freddy. I hardly recognized you in your police togs. You certainly scrub up well. I thank you for your help in collecting these bounties. I am impressed with all you have accomplished. And uh, I wish you luck with your future endeavors. You've done a wonderful job of helping the children of this city. So what you're saying is, I'm a hero. We pitched in what we could to properly express our gratitude. Thank you, Clara.
You look terrible. And you're late? Me? Never. I was simply retrieving the information you sent me to get. It was easy, really. Something about an event happening tonight at the Tower of London. The gala? I will be attending. You're our in, then. You can't just barge in and steal the crown jewels. She's right. We need a plan. Oh, bother. Jacob, you can escort Mr. Singh to tonight's event. This will give you a chance to slip away from the party and find the Koh i -Noor. I'll take care of the guards around the perimeter. Meet me at the top of the White Tower. Good! Another chance to wear the suit. No weapons allowed. Where's the fun in that? I should find Sing. The jewels are being held upstairs, but be careful. If this isn't one of the most heavily guarded places, then I'm a true Englishman. I may need your help to distract these guards. Just give me the signal. Why not change the uniform? You'd all look dashing in a shade of butter yellow. It's getting ridiculous. Really? Go away. Should have just stayed at home. I don't need to deal with this sort of treatment. I knew I should have stayed in bed today. But no, the veg won't buy itself. He's a bloody idiot to me. England has seen enough of red. Why not change the uniform? You all look dashing in a shade of butter yellow. Someone should go bother someone else, you noodle. England has seen enough of red. Why not change the uniform? You all look dashing in a shade of butter yellow. I could use an opportunity to replenish my purse. Would you tell me, kind sir, where the lavatory is exactly? The diamond is on the second floor. It's awfully quiet up here. Guards asleep. I wonder what's inside that crate. Someone got here before I did. Well, if the diamond's not here, I've got to find it before it leaves the building, if it hasn't already. Where could it have gone? This plan was genius. We'll get him this time. Friends with the Queen? Pah! She won't be friends with him when she finds the diamond is in his pocket. He'll never see it coming. 
Once he tries to walk out that door, he'll kiss his royal title goodbye. And henceforth be known as Prisoner C. They planted the diamond on the leap? Not good. missionary compound in Fatigan. Now to find my sister. The logins were quite fond of the art. Reach the White Tower. In the tempers. I've got to secure the perimeter. What took you so long? Bit of a mishap. Here it is. What happened? Somebody stole it first. The safe had been robbed by the time I got there. The British Indies Company will stop at nothing. There was a plan to frame Singh. I lifted it from him before the Royal Guards found it. Imagine the look on Her Majesty's face if... They must know by now that their plan was foiled. You're welcome. I think it's time to depart. I need to find a way out of here. Shit! <laughs> 
they make it out right. Did you get it to your sister? Just barely. What do you mean? I'll tell you about it another time. You encountered some trouble? We can't speak of this here. The British Indies Company is up to no good again. Outside, then. You, sir! Halt for inspection! <laughs> I beg your pardon? Search him! Nothing. The Corinor isn't here. But of course there's nothing. What do you take me for? Some sort of criminal? commotion about, Mr. Singh? I do believe they thought I was trying to pinch the Koh-i-Noor, your ladyship. Ha! Huh? The Koh-i-Noor? Who on earth would want to steal that potato? Good night, your highness. We barely got out of there in one piece. The British Indies Company tried to plant the diamond on you and frame you for stealing it. Luckily, I was there just in the nick of time. We need to meet back at Mr. Green's shop. I must see the diamond with my own two eyes. Koinor never left India. Had I known you planned to reclaim it, I would have stopped you. My father ensured it never fell into Templar hands. Your father? He has done a great service to me and my people. My words to you earlier were unfair. You were not wrong. I too have grown frustrated with my lack of progress. Shall we let bygones be bygones? We need to find out who's behind all of this. And why the Templars and the British Indies companies have joined forces. What we should do is track them down and destroy their headquarters. Jacob. That may not be such a terrible idea, Mr. Fry. I spoke with Mr. Green, and we have discovered the location of the British Indies' secret headquarters. You are to meet him, and he will give you the details. There is a foundry nearby where the Templars and BIC members have been meeting on a regular basis. Mr. Green waits for you there. But we still don't understand why they tried to frame you. We don't, but Mr. Green seemed to think that they're using the factory to develop something. It's a good place to start digging. Good luck.
I see you on. there. I hope you're prepared to it. You made it. You found the British Indies Company hideout? They've taken over an abandoned foundry. It's heavily fortified, and word has it, they're shipping something precious overseas. My gut tells me that something precious is something bad. My thoughts exactly. Go find out what they're protecting and destroy it. Maybe you'll discover why they're after Mr. Singh. So this is where they've been keeping that sleeping gas. They can't leave London. want this for? War? I must destroy them. Leave it 
Yes, go fetch the manager. People can see. Sir, the bomb shipments! They've been destroyed! Is that Ellsworth? I'd better get a closer look. Come on now! Destroyed? How? There's someone in the vicinity! A spy! Yeah. One of those rocks, I wager! Oh, it must be those damned renegades Sing is friends with. Who knew one caged bird could cause so much trouble? You're caught, Ellsworth. <laughs> Give up. I knew you had something to do with this. Seize him! Damn it. He got away. Focus on the big one! What did you find out? Who's behind all of this? You're not gonna like what I have to tell you, Your Highness. Brinley Ellsworth is behind the attacks. Ellsworth? He was gone before I had a chance to follow him. But we need to track him down and put an end to this before anything worse happens. I need some time to think on this. My dear friend, the Ghost Club has an extraordinary case for you. Spiritualist Thaddeus the Amazing has predicted his own death at his next seance. Could you have a look?
you have a visitor. Approach, please. What Goodness is happening here? Help! Not yet. Ah! Someone, light the lamps. Oh. He's actually dead. I believe I should re-interrogate a suspect. I have no doubt that his powers were genuine. He was able to tell me of my daily comings and goings and all manner of details that he couldn't possibly have known. He certainly was going to be able to put me in contact with my sister. I'm so sorry to lose Thaddeus. The oddest part is that he claimed all would be revealed to each of us before his death. I've been coming here to decide whether oh. I should accept a marriage proposal. Oh, Thaddeus had been attempting to contact my departed sister so that she could give me advice. Oh. Thaddeus was a kind man who sincerely wanted me to make the best choice. Now what am I to do? He was an incredible psychic. I came to clarify some uh, personal financial matters. I don't understand what happened. He foretold his own death, but I didn't expect it to happen like this. This is so frustrating. I had a simple question, but have had to come back for seance after seance, week after week. Each time Thaddeus divined a partial number from the other side, but never the entire correct number. Today he promised that I would get everything. Thaddeus felt that if I signed some papers, it would demonstrate to my dead father that I had absolute trust in Thaddeus. I sought him out after the death of Mittens. I was so hoping to hear from my loved one. I'm convinced Thaddeus could have communicated Mittens' wishes to me. 
I must know to whom Mittens wishes that I should leave my fortune. And now Thaddeus is lost to us. I shall never know. <coughs> Mittens is my beloved kitty cat. She was run over by a milk wagon several weeks ago. I've been trying desperately to contact my sweet thing ever since. I'm not well, though, and likely haven't long to live myself. Nothing but a showman, really. Each week he gave a seance with all his clients present together. So many people makes everything much more dramatic. I attend Lady Ursula at these sessions. She's ailing and needs someone to help her along. I have no particular belief in an afterworld, but if it comforts my lady, I see no harm. Lady Ursula's health is not good at all. And now she's lost her cat, it's almost like she has nothing left to live for. He's been Lady Ursula's butler for years. We have plans to marry. But first, Douglas needs to put together a little nest egg. He says he'll have some money soon. Lady Ursula was planning to leave her fortune to her cat, Mittens. Since the cat passed on, she's been going to that spiritualist in hopes that Mittens will tell her what to do with the money. To go back and ask about this.
Father mentioned this swindler to me. I understand it's because of him that my engagement has been delayed. I know the owner of a local brewery, and I'm convinced his business will flourish. He just needs some financial backing. Now Janice is free to be married at last. I'll invest my dowry in the brewery and make a fortune. Never trust a man who tells you what you want to hear. He's after something. Taking advantage of my daughter's love for her departed sister. With that charlatan gone, things can get back to normal. My daughter's engagement to Everett Boyd can be announced at last. A girl of Janice's age should be married. Everett is a very sensible young man from a good family. He'll be very successful, I'm sure of it. Janice's eldest sister was strong-willed. Janice always followed her lead. That's why it's so sad that she asked her advice, even in death. Time for Janice to think for herself. I know what's best for her. Oh. Janice is a lovely creature. I would be honored were she to accept and my who are you when you're at I do adore her. My brother has become obsessed with some secret bank account. He inherited almost all of my father's fortune, as well he should as the male heir. But some was locked in a secret account. I think it unlikely that it should be a significant amount. I went along to the seances a couple of times. I thought it was a waste of my brother's time. Power of attorney to a psychic. That sounds very unusual indeed. That's me. Yeah, some fella come by here every so often. Gives me a silver sixpence if I tell him everything about the folks in that house. Nothing unusual about him. 
Just a regular fella. I've seen him go into that building over there. I should go back and ask about this. I think someone paid Thaddeus to tell my lady that a cat wanted them to inherit. Well, that would be quite a clever scheme indeed. I simply do not believe it. And if you're implying that my butler was paying Thaddeus, I must ask you, why would a great psychic do the bidding of a common butler? Hmm? My own sister? Paying Thaddeus off? I thought he was a bit too insistent that I sign that paper. Well, Anne is going to get a good talking to, believe you me. Good Lord, you found the office? I admit it, then. Thaddeus and I traveled the world, bamboozling the gullible and then exposing the swindle. But his death was meant to be a fake. I have no reason to want Thaddeus dead. Quite the contrary. You believe that Everett paid Thaddeus to manipulate me? It cannot be true. Thaddeus knew all of my comings and goings. He genuinely could communicate with the world beyond. He was going to reveal my plot. He paid the price for betraying a fellow crook. This Thaddeus fellow was rather too clever by half. But you pieced it all together very cleverly. To Mr. Raymond was particularly interested in this one. He admired the duplicity of Thaddeus.
There has been a murder at the palace. I need you to be careful with this one. Anti-royalist pamphlets have been cropping up and tensions are high. The Queen is very nervous about security. This way. This way. Here we are. Good luck. I should return and find out about this. I should return and find out about this. Please, leave the room for a moment. No one is permitted to see me open the safe. Imagine that someone was after the scepter. I must see it. I ordered the scepter with the dove to be brought from the tower for tonight's event. <gasps> Thank heavens! It is untouched. to find him here dead as you see him he gave his life to defend my person only I know the combination the vault contains the very precious scepter with the dove which I've chosen to be used in tonight's knighthood ceremony this evening I will knight several industrialists that have worked to end the practice of child labor all of London's luminaries are invited.
sum of 50 pounds. I trust you. Ah! Let's go. I believe I should re-interrogate a suspect. some sort of master criminal on the loose. Then this morning, he's gone. Come to think of it, he had been going on about the Queen and all for the last day or two. Seemed to think she was in some sort of trouble. He said he was onto something. Said everything added in clues. You know, when he thought something was important, He'd write it up in invisible ink. Lemon juice like. He'd use smoke to read it. If you have a way to make smoke, you can see what it says. I did see Artie's friend, Mr. Raymond. He'd just come from Perlock Publishing with his new Penny Dreadful. Seemed very excited about it. I never liked him much.
He's planning an explosion at the palace. It must be evacuated. That's a girl. There's at least a hundred people here for the knighthood ceremony. The queen will use the scepter with the dove for the knighting. She'll arrive precisely at one o'clock. I cannot wait to see it. Out of here now! Damn you! I demand to know what's going on. Why is nothing happening? Nothing? What's going on? I've been tricked! Raymond! Why has he done this? <coughs> you are more naive than you appear. Look beyond the obvious, beyond surface appearances. Nothing but a showman. So many people makes everything more dramatic. I found the same clues you found. I knew there was to be an explosion and I led you here to save everyone. I'm as mystified as you are that nothing happened. Seems to me you've created the perfect diversion, haven't you? You've helped me herd all those dreary people to certain death. We shall hear the explosion presently. Qu 
quite right. I brought him his invitation to the knighthood ceremony. The one with the special scepter. Never trust a man who tells you what you want to hear. He is after something. While you were chasing all those people around, I absconded with the Queen. A hefty ransom is now due. A man like me can take anything he wants, even the Queen's most beloved item of all her crown jewels, the priceless and symbolic scepter with the dove. I needed you to distract everyone so that I could quietly assassinate Her Majesty the Queen. The scepter with the dove taken with your help. What could better display my genius? No one questions you when you wear a uniform. I suspect the solution will turn on geometry. I am a fellow of many skills. Cracking a safe is but one. I simply watched the Queen open the safe when you arrived. I threatened the Queen with her very life. She told me the combination in a thrice. Quite right. The dead guard was I. The spider venom allowed me to fake my death. 
I had a perfect view from where I lay. I have stolen the Queen's most prized possession. The scepter with the dove. Think of it. I have outfoxed you. The most cunning detective in Britain. I mocked you by leaving clues for you at every turning point. Now I have the scepter. Proof positive of my superiority. Jacob, wake up! It's Raymond. He's taken Artie hostage. They're on the roof. Evie's here to help you, Jacob. Don't worry, Jacob. He won't know it's coming. I suppose this means our detective days are over. But what about you, Artie? I'm glad I survived Mr. Raymond's insanity, but sadly he won't be here anymore to write more books. A great loss, I'm sure. I'm quite serious, Miss Evie. Me and my friends waited every week to read the next number and find out what happened next. Why don't you write some yourself? A fellow would have to be very clever indeed. Sounds like you'd be in your element, my dear. The gruesome Whitechapel murders by Artie. I should think I would use my full name, by Artie Conan Doyle. I'd use Arthur. Sounds more of a serious fellow. case of madness this morning. You were right when you said that this was our chance. I was. I propose we make a commotion. Lure out the Templar-controlled British Indies Company. And do what? Put yourself in the line of fire? I need to send out with a message. This won't be over until we can draw him out. This is something I must do. I will make a scene, and then you need to wrap them up. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. You Templars are a bunch of pansies. Here we go. Send a message to Ellsworth. I'll do anything. 
There's nothing here for you but a pound. Tell him he's there. To meet me at Lambeth Cemetery tonight and tell him I'll feed to come your alone. To the cats. Bagger off, shrimp. You're going home in a box, me lad. Bagger off home before I snap your neck. Meet me tonight at Lambeth Cemetery. He'll never come alone, even if I ask him to. I'll teach you a fucking lesson. You won't even get away, did you? Fuck me. caused quite a commotion. He's gone mad. Greeny was right. He isn't mad, Jacob. He's trying to take action. To do the right thing. Oh, never mind. I'll take it from here. Fine by me. I could use a good pint right about now. I was expecting Jacob, but I'm glad it's you who have come. He thinks you've gone mad. I probably have. What's your plan?
Are we having a That'll certainly help quite a bit, thank you. He's here. I must talk to him. Don't be absurd, this is dangerous. Miss Fry, this is something I must do, and I must do it alone. Remain hidden. I cannot afford to have him see you. You can't escape me forever, Your Highness. Come out and face me. as I once was seen. I wouldn't dare come to this meeting place alone. Not with your recently acquired friends. <clears throat> Kill me now, you will be a wanted man. Imagine the uprising when they find out the only son of Ranjit Singh has been murdered. <laughs> you think they remember you? You are a lost soul. A monarch. Who says the thing? I knew you were lying, Singh. Just walk this earth like a free man. You are nothing more than a trophy. A stag's head above a mantelpiece. You've caused enough commotion as it is. It's time to put an end to this. If you kill me now, you will be a wanted man. Imagine the uprising when they find out the only son of Ranjit's... <laughs> Elsworth, listen. Ugh. I've had enough of this. <laughs> No, you mustn't! He will kill you! This is what I was sent here for. Be done with it, girl! I shall never forfeit my own mission. I will not allow it. The logins, the company. They all wanted your silence. Whether you spare me or end me, you won't escape the fate they have planned for you. It seems you have learned nothing of India, of its people. But killing you, that is something I cannot do. It would make me no better than the cursed, oppressive company you work for. Yeah. You will die as you were raised, Singh. You'll never be more than a, a trophy of war. 
we will bury you in English soil. You have done me much good. I am heavily indebted to you both. We are happy to help. I fear that I cannot continue handling things in this manner. The assassin way is not my way. As helpful as you have been, this empire, this land, my people. The problem is so much bigger than death. I know I must devote my life to this cause, to put India, my home, back onto the map, return it to its people. It's a long and grueling journey, but it is something I must do, even if it takes me to my own death. We understand, Your Highness. But if you do change your mind, you know where to find us. That I do. Thank you, Assassins. Hopefully we never shall meet again. Time for a jaunt around London. Remember that young lady I was engaged to marry before I feigned my death so that I could see what sort of woman she was? Well, I have good news. I'm now in love with her and I want to marry her after all. And I need you. I have a rather artful plan. You, playing the part of a ruffian, will kidnap her. Then you must bring her to where I am waiting. I shall leap from a shadowy corner and beat you to a pulp thereby saving her life and winning her heart. That is far and away, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the worst plan I have ever heard. Now, put me down somewhere insalubrious, and I shall ready an ambush for you. Somewhere in Lambeth should suffice. Yeah! Looks rough enough. Off Steady you go on. and nab her. She's at Waterloo Station, I believe. Oh, and make sure you play your part well. <laughs> Doing fine, girl. Keep moving. <laughs> On, girl. Yeah. Whoa, now. Yeah. 
You're coming with me, little bird. Stop! Is that Help! Gonna happen? Oh my goodness! What's all that then? Oh, bugger. What's going on now? Unhand me this on? instant! <laughs> Looks oh. like a mess is brewing. What is the meaning of this? Now, what could that be? I hope that doesn't involve me somehow. Quite odd. I wonder what that's this is about. Terribly inappropriate. We make for a peculiar pair. You'll be What's found out in no time. What's this about? Someone's up to no good. There's some sort of scuffle over there. <gasps> Let's go. shall save you, madam, for I am John Hammond, your fiancé. What? Ha! 
a happy coincidence that you were here to save me. Wasn't it? And if you will allow me, my dearest Bella, I shall forever be by your side to protect you from this day forth. Come, my dear, let us be gone from this terrible place, and I shall explain all. I should return to Charlie and Charlie to tell them the happy news. Who's a good yes. That's a girl. Whoa there. Keep moving. And so all's well that ends well. Our young lovers are united at last and will soon marry. No accounting for taste, I suppose. And by the looks of you, they really hit it off. <laughs> I must say, it's all rather exciting. I do love these sorts of tales. It all feels strangely familiar. I wonder why. We should drink to John Hammond and his unconventional idea of courtship. Indeed, to John Hammond. Our mutual friend. Of course he'd arrive in that. Miss Fry? Hand him your weapons. We must enter an armed. Go on in, sir and madam. Dear man, I am soon to become prime minister. What in the blazes is our carriage doing here? Did I hear something? No, just the voices in your own head. And yet, they are so much more pleasant than yours. Charming. Aren't I? I shall go and find the piece of Eden. As you wish. I'm off to meet Freddy. The plans are located in the white drawing room, which is most likely locked. The captain of the guard will have a key.
Keep your mouth closed, and this will be over before you know it. Who are you? The lady is with me. Much obliged. Madam? Gentle. My arm. My arm. Gentle. I'd say they ought to put funds in the taking care of My arm. Gentle. That hurts. My arm. That hurts. That hurts. My arm. Gentle. Pleasant dreams. Plans are somewhere nearby. Now for the vault.
Jacob's most likely off stealing another carriage somewhere, or accidentally pushing the Queen down a flight of stairs. There you are! <laughs> I have someone I'm simply dying for you to meet. Uh, do, 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 do. come with me! Your Majesty, may I present Miss uh, Evie Fry? You are the one responsible for Mr. Gladstone's mishap. Your Majesty, I apologize. I... The cake is particularly good. Enjoy the ball. I really must be going. Miss Fry, may I have this dance? Mr. Starrick, you've had your fun, but the game is over. Uh -uh. Listen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Time is a wonderful thing, Miss Fry. It heals all wounds. We may make mistakes while dancing. But the mazurka ends, and then we begin again. Problem is, everyone forgets. They trip on the same mistakes over and over. People can learn. Can they? Isn't everyone around you repeating the same steps? But if one man could remember the dance, could know the time, then he could change things for the better. I have had enough. This dance is nearly over. Soon, the people will forget the generation on this terrace. The ruin you nearly wrought on London. When the music ceases, Miss Fry, your time is up. Begins. Freddy, Starrick peppered the regulars with his own men and took several guards hostage. Your weapons are in there. Oh, ye of little faith.
him! Now to find the real royal guards. Get you out. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Hold still for a moment. You have my thanks. Thanks, mate. You fancy some fun? That'll be all. to the walls is one must lead with one's right foot. Oh, my! Everything all right, my dear? Do you require assistance? I never liked balls. <laughs> Here, the location of the vault, go! Just like that? No plan? No time for plans. I'll catch up as soon as I'm rid of this infernal contraption.
are you doing? Exploiting. I warn you, my boy. But you do not listen. Requiem's cart and pache. Me rectify my mistake. You're weakening! Uh. 
You cannot maintain this! Zerik! Your reign is nearly over! It has barely begun. London will perish without me. You flatter yourself. I would have created a paradise. The city belongs to the people. You are but one man. I am at the very top of the order. You were, Mr. Starrick. <laughs> you were. Shame we won't be partners anymore. It's for the best, isn't it? Are you gonna wear the shroud and run London? Whatever it gives, it takes from someone else. You'd continue to age without me. You'd become like father. A fate worse than death. Will you wear it? After you sorted out the boroughs, the chaos I caused, I couldn't compete. Jacob Fry stepping back. Who's blackmailing you? Is it George? He wouldn't dare. I've missed you. Me too. Would it be possible to continue where we left off? I'd love nothing more. I'm starting to think Father didn't know everything about everything. <laughs> Henry. It's a big world out there. With London in the center. Perhaps not the very center. I came as soon as I could. Do not worry. I'll... I'll head back to the train. Did I... Did I jeopardize the mission? Henry, you saved it. I think you belong in the field. With me. A carriage. Nicely done, Freddy. Mr. Abilene, please. Your Majesty. Miss Fry. You've met before? Did I never mention? Mr. Abilene informs me that you three are responsible for saving my life. Is this true? It is, Your Majesty. Evie Fry, step forward. And you? My brother, ma'am. Jacob Fry. And this is Mr. Henry Green. Mr. Fry? Mr. Green? Neil? Arise. 
I invest you all in the Order of the Sacred Garter. Thank you, Your Majesty. If you are as adept as Mr. Abilene implies, I may call on you. Sergeant Abilene tends to exaggerate, Your Majesty. We shall meet again. And Miss Fry? Ma'am? Should you want it? I saved you some cake. <laughs> Father would be proud of you. <laughs> Dame Evie Fry. <laughs> Sir Jacob Fry. <laughs> Race you to the train. You're on. That's it. It's under the palace. Time to go. Let's get the shroud to Dr. Grammatica immediately. Sigma team beat us here. We're too late. What do we do? Killing really is the least productive way to achieve our goals. Kill them all. Leave them Contact! Cover me! That skinny piece of shit tried to murder me, Berg. I want him them to bleed. Dreams that poisoned us, them that told us lies of their bravery, them that preached of progress and put us in the poor house. <laughs> Them done the horrid murder on bloody stages Them that loudly crowed their humility Lords and they that sung in the chapels on a Sunday All quiet now, their mouths are stopped up Hold still, goddammit! They lie flung in rats and make no sound Only the mission matters! Understood! Those who fought Sean! for something better Those who taught by how they live Loved ones taken long before this world Galena, we need an exit! We need to go now. Understood. Shroud. Forget the bloody shroud. Stay with me, Bex. Please. We go. Good work in there, Initiate. In time, we will recover the Shroud. And hey, we pulled a feed from our bug in Isabel's computer before they shut us out. Playing it now. Sorry about the mess. <laughs> so, how's the Shroud gonna help you create a new clone? It's not. And the shroud is wrapped around the body. It scans it for damage and then reconstructs it on a cellular level. You're not making a clone. You're gonna recreate a precursor from scratch. Bingo! The Phoenix Project timetable just got accelerated big time. I'm going to call Alan Rick and deliver the good news. <laughs> it's like Christmas! <laughs>
Hello? It's me? Brought the shroud as you asked, but... I'm scared. Do not fear me. You've done well. I'm not scared of you. I'm scared for you. Anyone finds out what you've been doing. You have played your part, my instrument. I will save you. I will save you all. Honored friends. Your Majesty. We understand that with Crawford Staric gone, a certain secret society finds itself searching for leadership. An upstart faction seeks to enter London and seize power. Do you feel your life is in danger, ma'am? No. Rather, I fear that the people of this grand city may suffer. I call upon you to foil this traitorous plot. You can depend on us. You will meet my loyal aide at the docks for instructions. The work begins immediately. Alfred Fleming. I run Her Majesty's Secret Service. First things first, we need to clear the area of anything that might alarm the enemy. Like that police carriage. Would you kindly dispose of it? Strange guy, <laughs> Agents are here disguised as civilians. Get them into position for our ambush. A ship will soon arrive from Boston. Its cargo, dynamite. Its crew, Templar. What say you to greeting it with an ambush? If we must, we must.
their leader. I want him brought to me at the station, alive. Care to tell me your plans? Go to hell! Now, now. Steric may be dead and gone, but the Temporal Order will never die. We will rise again, like a phoenix from the ashes, and bring the world to its knees. Yes, well, best of luck with that. carry on from here. My people are recovering their explosive cargo. You did fine work today. I will have a chat with our distinguished guest here to see what schemes he and his friends are brewing. Do let me know if he says anything interesting. Of course. <laughs> has attempted to force a confession from your prisoner. The miscreant refuses to talk. Will you speak to the villain and learn his secrets? Leave it to me, Your Majesty. There you go. 
Must I pummel you severely about the head and shoulders? Or can we simply talk? Might as well. The order was to load a train with explosives at Westminster. It'll detonate before reaching Southwark Station and kill everyone aboard. You people in your damn dynamite. When does it happen? I beg of you. It's the next train. It should leave at any moment. You'll never make it in time. the bomb from the other cars. much lamented husband adored these gardens he called them his one safe port in the midst of the mad seas of this world we miss him dearly fellow conspirators soon enough.
Come on. Here now. Too many innocents nearby. I'll snatch away the explosives before continuing the hunt. Too many innocents nearby. I'll snatch away the explosives before continuing the hunt. If we can't blow up a building, we'll just have to settle for blowing up an assassin. Go on. Upstart Templars and quickly. The final group of upstarts are making their last desperate stand. They have penetrated the Houses of Parliament and plan to detonate whatever explosives they have left. Please find Mr. Fleming, so we might put an end to this once and for all.
That's it. Multiple targets inside the palace, all armed and dangerous. Making matters worse, the Prime Minister has gone missing. I need you to deal with the Templars. Target one is in a nearby corridor, surrounded by civilians. He has explosives on his person. You need to take him by surprise. If he sees you, he'll detonate his bomb. In the meantime, I'll search for the Prime Minister. Too much to drink, ain't this? Oh. Ah, wonder who she's hiding from. This place is full of them. Just look the other way. Drink, eh, miss? Prime Minister, I'll have you free in a moment. Not another step, assassin. You've lost, don't you see? The Houses of Parliament are rigged to explode at the last stroke of twelve. There's nothing you or anyone else can do to stop it now. The Houses of Parliament will be leveled. Find those bombs before they go off.
Now, please come with me. You and your sibling have been summoned. Approach. You have honored us with your loyalty and courage. Long may we strengthen the Empire together. Your Majesty, we will always work to ensure the safety of the people. But with the greatest respect, our philosophy forbids us from assisting with the expansion of the Empire. Perhaps, ma'am, you could consider putting an end to your imperialist desires. <laughs> I understand and respect your position. Bound as you are by your creed, you will indulge me one final time and receive these gifts. Goodbye, and may God bless the noble fries. I suppose you'll be offered any more cake. 